Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to look at our second common op amp circuit and that is the non-inverting amplifier. Turns out most op amp circuits can really be broken into uh, special cases of the inverting amplifier which we saw last time and in this case the non-inverting amplifier. These two example, these two cases don't cover all op amp circuits but they do cover a great deal of them. So let's just dive right in. This is the non-inverting op uh, non-inverting amplifier circuit. And so th the goal here in this derivation is to discover what is the output voltage V out in terms of the input voltage V in. And in this case we see the V in voltage is connected to the non-inverting terminal. So what do we know about op amps? Well all op amps are designed such that they have very little, effectively zero, current that goes in the input. That's just the way they're designed with a really large input resistance so there's no current flowing in the inputs. We also know that the voltage at the output of the op amp is a really big version of V plus minus V minus. The output voltage of the op amp is a really large version of the input voltage difference. Well if you take the fact that the output is a really large version of the input voltage difference and we have negative feedback then we come up with the relationship that the two input voltages are basically the same because any difference between V plus and V minus will generate a large response there and the negative feedback will tend to close down that input voltage difference. So now we can really just break this circuit wide open. So we know that the voltage we know the voltage at this point is Vn. Why? Well it's connected to a Vn voltage source. Remember this, this Vn basically represents a voltage source connected to ground. So the voltage at this point is Vn. Well since the two input terminals are virtually shorted together because of the negative feedback, I know the voltage here is Vn or Vi. Well if I have a voltage Vi at this point I know that this is a ground therefore there will be an IS current. Current will flow into ground because there is a voltage VI at the inverting terminal. And what is IS? Well IS is going to be the VN voltage which is across the RS resistor and that's going to give rise to the current flowing into ground Ohm's law and the passive sign convention. Well where did that current come from? Well we know it didn't come from the op amps inverting terminal there's no current flowing there. So this IS current must have come from the feedback path. So the current here is IF and we know that must be equal to IS and that's writing KCL at the inverting terminal. And what again what is IS? Well it's VN over RS and we're almost done. If the current IF is flowing to the left then the passive sign convention says I can expect a voltage drop across the RF resistor and that's going to be IF times RF. And now we, re we really have the answer we're looking for. What is the output voltage? Well I know that I started at a voltage here which was VN, VI, and then if you were to progress this direction to the right through the resistor you would see an increase in energy. Going to the right you see the energy increase and so how much does it go up? Well it goes up IF which is VI over RS times RF. And the way you normally see this written for the non-inverting amplifier circuit is V out equals V in. So the output of the non-inverting amplifier is the input and it's magnified by a quantity which is 1 plus RF over RS. And if you stop and just look at this result for just one moment you'll see some interesting things. First of all, notice that in this formula there is no negative sign like we saw with the inverting amplifier circuit. So if the input voltage Vn is a positive number we see from this formula that the output voltage is also going to be positive. If the input voltage is negative then I expect the output voltage to be negative. The signs, the SIGNs of the input and outputs are going to be the same. Hence the name. It's the non-inverting amplifier. It does not flip the output over relative to the input. The output and the input have the same polarities. Also because 
that you notice that the this gain formula 1 plus RF over RS, all right, RF and RS are values, and so the smallest you can make this ratio is basically near zero, and so the smallest you can make this total gain is going to be one. You can make it bigger, but you can't make it smaller than one. And so the non-inverting amplifier strictly amplifies. You cannot attenuate the input toward the output because one plus RF over RS is always going to be greater than or equal to one. So this is the formula you need to commit to memory and the circuit that goes with it. This is the non-inverting amplifier circuit and it occurs a lot in uh, our analysis of op amps. Let's look at the non-inverting amplifier circuit just a little bit more before we go on and that is the question of what is the input what is the input resistance seen by the input? This VN voltage source is connected to our non-inverting amplifier circuit. What is the resistance that that voltage source VI sees? And this is actually very straightforward because remember what does it mean to be the resistance? What is the resistance seen looking into this? Well RN is simply going to be whatever current flows, we'll call it IN, all right, and that is the the VN voltage and is going to have an IN current and the ratio of those two will be simply the input resistance. All right, And what is the current that flows this direction? Well it's the input directly connected of an op amp and what is the current that flows in the input terminals of an op amp? Well it's basically zero. And so what you have is the input resistance for the op amp is going to be VN over something that is effectively zero which means that the input resistance of this circuit approaches infinity. In fact, the input resistance, the resistance seen looking into this circuit, is going to be whatever the input resistance is of the op amp itself. But it's going to be very large. So in effect, it's going to be very close to infinity, a very large number. Now let's look at a special case of the non-inverting amplifier. And this circuit's called the voltage follower, and it's actually very easy to analyze. And we'll we'll do it two ways because it's so it's so simple. So here we have the op amp, so we know we have no current flowing, no current flowing. All right, and we see that we have, of course, an op amp has a really large voltage, which is the big voltage difference of the inputs. We have negative feedback, so I expect those two voltages to be the same. And then we're really done because we see that the voltage at this point is going to be VN. The inverting and non-inverting terminals are virtually shorted together, so the voltage here is also going to be VN, and that is V out. And so V out simply equals VN, hence the name. Whatever voltage you attach to the input of this, the output voltage is going to be the same thing. The output voltage will follow the input voltage. The output voltage equals the input voltage. It follows it. We could analyze it a different way. We could look at this and you can say, this looks sort of like the non-inverting amplifier we just analyzed. And in the non-inverting amplifier, remember, V out equals Vn times 1 plus Rf over Rs. Well, where is the Rf and Rs resistors in this circuit? Well, they're the Rf resistor is right there. And we see that in our case, Rf is 0. And where's the RS resistor? And you may not, it might not dawn on you right away, but the RS resistor is right there. And you say, but it's not there. Well, it is because it's an infinite resistor. So the RF resistor is zero ohms. The RS resistor is infinity. And so we see that V out equals V in times 1 plus 0. That's all we need to know because that's going to say V out equals V in, but we're going to go a step further. We're going to take 0 and divide it by infinity, which makes the 0 even, even more 0, if you will, and you see V out equals V in, and this is the voltage follower circuit. And so at first glance you may think, we'd, we'd never use this circuit, but it turns out you use this circuit a lot, and the reason you want to use this circuit is because you get the ability to get an output voltage, you, you take the, the output voltage equals the input voltage, so you can copy a voltage, but notice that the voltage source here sees an infinite input resistance. And that's really, really handy at times. Let's look at another case of the non-inverting amplifier circuit. 
And actually, this also involves the inverting amplifier circuit. This is the level shifter. And how we're going to solve this is we're going to look at this circuit, and we see that we do have a voltage source that is kind of connected to the non-inverting terminal. So it looks like a non-inverting op-amp circuit. But we also see that there's a voltage source that's connected to the inverting terminal. So it sort of looks like an inverting op-amp circuit. And actually, it is both of them at the same time. So how do we analyze this? Well, we're going to apply the concept of superposition. And that says that the output voltage I'm looking for, I'm looking for V out, I can find V out by seeing what V out is due to the 3 volt source all by itself. And then I can find V out due to the VI source all by itself and add them together. And that'll be the total result. And we're going to do that. So let's kill the VN source. If we're going to kill the VN source, we're going to make it a zero volt voltage source, which what that does is effectively we take this point here and we have grounded it. And if you look at this circuit, basically that all goes away. And if you look at the circuit, we see that we have the non-inverting amplifier. We have an RF resistor, we have an RS connected to ground, and so we can figure out what is the output voltage, well, it's going to be the output voltage is going to be V out due to the 3 volt source plus V out due to the V in source and V out due to the 3 volt source. Well, it's a non-inverting amplifier and so we know that the voltage here is going to be negative V in, which is 3 volts, times 1 plus RF over RS. And, excuse me, not a negative. That'll be a positive 3 times 1 plus RF over RS. And so that would be the voltage at the output due to the 3 volt source acting alone. Superposition says if I can find the output voltage due to VI and then add them together, I'm done. So let's turn on the VI voltage source again. And then what we're going to do is we're going to kill the 3 volt source, which makes it a 0 volt source. And what that does is that effectively makes a wire there and connects this non-inverting terminal to ground. And if you look at this scenario, you see that we have the case of the inverting amplifier circuit. And so I can figure out what the output of the inverting amplifier circuit due to VI is. And we did that before. That's minus VI RF over RS. And so here we have the output V out due to VN acting alone. And it's right here. And if we take these and clean these up a bit, we can simplify. And we get 3 plus 3RF over RS minus VI RF over RS. And then clean up some more. We can take, we get 3 plus RF over RS. And here we get 3 minus VI. Or if you want to write it one other different way, you could say it is 3 Well, we already have that one before. So what we get is the output. We see that the output voltage has the input voltage scaled. But then we're also adding to that a constant. 3, times, uh, three plus 3 times RF over RS is a constant. And then this is the output voltage scaled. And so this is why it's called the level shifter, because the output voltage becomes a scaled version of the input. But then we've added to it some kind of constant and basically added a, a shifted the level of the outputs. So what we need to take from this video, the walk away message, is this is the circuit, which is the non-inverting amplifier. And the formula for the output of the non-inverting amplifier, V out equals VN, 1 plus RF over RS. And the other key point to remember is that the key, a really useful feature of this circuit is that 
since the current that goes into the op amp is zero amps, then the input voltage Vn sees a resistance which is basically infinite or at least as big as the input, vol input resistance of the op amp itself. So as we go forward and look at op amp circuits, you'll see that oftentimes they are combinations of the inverting amplifier and the non-inverting amplifier.